You're watching Metal Hammer TV. I'm Amit, and we're in the studio with Thomas and Floor from Nightwish. How the devil are you guys? <laughs> really, really good. Really Happy. Good. Sun is shining. The sky is really blue. So <laughs> I'm really excited about tonight as well. Your the plane? second time in Brixton Academy. Brixton almost, Academy. yeah, almost sold out. And last night in Manchester was a really, really magical show. So looking really forward for yeah. tonight. Good. I mean, Brixton Academy, it's a massive venue. You guys are going to tear it up. So uh, it's been such a busy year for Nightwish. You guys have been up to so much. Um, I guess before we move on and talk about the future, um, I guess a lot of our readers want to know like what happened with Annette, because I think that announcement came as a bit of a shock, if you don't mind letting us know. Yeah, I'm sure it came as a shock to everybody. And uh, we came out with a statement which pretty much says it all. I mean, it still is a private matter. And that's all we want to say about it. Yeah. Like ever. Uh, it was an amicable divorce, so to say. And, you know, made in good spirit. And we are just looking into the future. And there really is no reason to go back into all the details and all that. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is not politics. This is a rock band. Of course. Yeah. Because... I um, I mean I I noticed in her statement one thing she said was Rihanna wouldn't ask Britney Spears to step in to well her event and sing for her if she was ill, and I think that was a comparison she made. I mean, uh, what what were your thoughts when you read that? Well, like I said, uh, we don't want to go back into those days anymore. I mean, we really don't want to talk about the issue at all. I think once more we made a statement, and if people can read read in between the lines and, you know, see the big picture. That's all that matters at the moment. So let's leave it at that. Okay. And I mean, in that situation, you know, most bands would have cancelled all their activity, but Nightwish, you just ploughed ahead, you know. Um, I'd love to know what, what made you want to just carry on and power through. The way I see it is that Nightwish is, it's like a carousel that needs to go on spinning no matter what. It's more than just five persons doing music. It's just an institution. It's a thing that needs to keep on going no matter what. And, um, you know, the last thing you want to do in this band is to cancel any shows, cancel any tours. You just have to keep on going for the people, for the spirit, for ourselves, for everybody. Definitely. And uh, I mean, Flo, you've you've stepped in. How's it been for you? <laughs> well, talking about a carousel or a, a wild <laughs> a ride, it's a uh, it's been uh, well wonderful, crazy, and very exciting. Um, scary sometimes. First show was. I think I was just scared to death maybe five minutes before the show. Like, what the hell am I going to do? Yeah. My God! But. I got the, the you know the, the confidence from from the guys that I could do it. I thought I could do it. The audience welcomed me, and from that moment off, it was just magical. It's been really really good. That's great yeah. to hear. And uh, how much of a Nightwish fan were you before you stepped in? Well, um, I, yeah, a, a fan sounds weird in, in for me because I'm a musician myself, and we've toured with Nightwish over ten years ago. Uh, with my band after forever back in the days. So ever since, um, yeah, uh, we we stayed in touch on a regular basis, and I followed the, the band's moves and uh, listened to their music and uh, always enjoyed it very much. So so fan is a weird word again, but definitely someone who followed and loved uh, the music loves. And so uh, yeah, um, but of course it's it becomes a whole new thing when you are asked to sing it <laughs> yourself yeah. yeah well talking about on a certain uh, level we are each other's fans you could say that oh th that sounds yeah. nice yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've done so much have been for years yeah because mm. I, I remember you were on the well re fairly recent Devin Townsend record as well Deconstruction yes I am working with the man himself how was that yeah well I didn't really literally work with him uh, um, but I got a call like yeah we have this part and uh, they told me that if anybody can sing it, it should be you. 
And I was like, hey, this is Devin Townsend. I'm such a huge, well, f call it fan then of his music. I had uh, big respect, big, you know, I love everything he did, um, especially with his like solo work. So, uh, yeah, that was a honor and a very exciting thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. And I mean, you, you've been playing with Nightwish for quite well, a good, good while now, say like what, a month? Yeah, it's been a, this is going to be the thirteenth show actually tonight. Okay, yeah. um, I'd love to know what your favorite Nightwish songs to sing. Ah, it would definitely be Love uh, uh, Ghost Love Score. That's the number one. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Okay. And what is it about the song that you just enjoy singing? <sighs> it's not just singing. I think it's the whole vibe of the song, and uh, it's it's it has a lot of different ingredients, and it really goes from really heavy to very small and to, to super dramatic and uh, can trigger me to, to bring out, you know, a lot of myself. And I had, yeah, why do you like the color blue more than you like red? Sometimes, you know, it's just hard to put your finger on it, but it, it touches me in a way. There's an emotion in it that uh, that relates to something I feel. Not literally, but it just, yeah, touched me. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that's why. That's awesome. Um, I guess there's one question that all your fans would want to know uh, and that they're dying to, to know. Uh, in terms of Nightwish's future, what, what are the chances of Floor becoming the next Nightwish singer full time? <laughs> yeah. That's a tricky one. <laughs> it's a tricky one. The way that uh, we have decided is that we're going to continue with her until the end of the festival season in 2013. Uh, okay. Just have fun. Just do the shows the best we can. I mean... The atmosphere in the band is so good at the moment. Just enjoy this, what we have right now. Then try not to think about Nightwish at all for a few months. Everybody yeah. take a little vacation. And we already have uh, the rehearsal place for the next album booked in 2014 from July to September. So that's how far we have planned. But... When we do the last festival show next August, after that, it's going to be total nothing for a few months. Yeah. So I would say everything is possible, but that's really not the thing that we want to be thinking about right now, because there's absolutely no reason to. Yeah, of course. I mean, you guys must have uh, so much on your mind, especially with the Imagineering movie and soundtrack that's coming out uh, well very soon. I mean, the you were just telling me that the uh, the big preview night for your movie in Finland's in about a week's time. Sure is next Saturday. It's going to be a really weird occasion. First of all, we play this show for about 80 minutes. Then there's going to be one hour break when people can go and buy the new Imaginarium red wine, have a taste of that, and then come back to the venue and see the movie for the first time in the world. So it's going to be a really special happening. That sounds amazing. I mean, I love red wine. <laughs> I didn't know you guys were making your own wine. That's amazing. Yeah, is that's it not... a one-off, is it, to tie in with the movie? Or is it something that you're going to continue to produce? Well, let's see what people think about it. But the idea is that it would be on the shelves for the years to come, too. Amazing. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, thinking about the movie and the concept, you know, um, uh, we did a feature in Metal Hammer fairly recently looking at how uh, the, the idea came about and obviously you working with the director and um, I think you, you also said that the, the Finnish uh, government or film society had donated some money as well. Yes. must have been such an epic project to put together. Did you ever see yourself doing something like that like 10 years ago? Well, the idea was to challenge ourselves and the fans into something completely new. And the way I see it now is that uh, we were and still are a bunch of amateurs diving into the deep end of the pool, having no idea how to get back on dry land. That's how it felt doing this film. Um, <laughs> it was much, much more complicated than originally thought, but uh, ended up as winners. We just saw the film for the first time about two months ago, and it's really, really good. So we can all be really proud of it. It's weird but it looks like the band. Great stuff. And um, I mean, you know, composing a score must have been very different to just writing normally for Nightwish itself. Um, I'd love to know, what, what were your biggest influences when you were thinking, right, okay, we've got to make a movie and this is soundtrack. 
How, how did you kind of channel your thoughts into like creativity? Um, well, the creation of the score is a bit complicated as well because the original idea was to do uh, like a short movie for each of the 13 songs on the album. That was the original idea. And then the director came up with the idea that let's combine all of these uh, scripts for the short movies and just do one full length feature, yeah. which includes all of these short stories. I said, okay. And then we made the script, started filming. And at that time we realized that there's no way that we can work with only the songs from the album. It's too much. I mean, it's a fantasy drama movie. You can't put the, the heavy metal pound, pounding in the background. So we actually need a separate score. And this would have been like about a year ago. We were just about to start the tour. There was a lot of rehearsing going on, a lot of promotion. There was no way that anybody of us could do the score. So that's why we hired this guy called Petri Alango, who basically did the whole score. We just gave him all the tracks from all the songs on Imaginarium and said, do your magic. And then for the next five months, he uh, toyed around with all the tracks and did his own arrangements and reinterpretations of the songs. And this is the result. I mean, having already been through the experience once, is it something that fans could expect again from Nightwish? Would you ever go back and think, all oh, right, OK, Imagineerum, the movie really worked. Let's let, let's try that again. Well, we are not traumatized by the experience. So <laughs> I wouldn't say definitely not. But uh, at the moment, it feels like a distant thing. But who knows? And uh, is there any idea yet on when UK fans will get to see the movie? We'll know more, I think, in about two or three weeks, because the big boys are discussing with the distributors all the time. Um, there's definitely going to be a DVD and Blu-ray release, maybe during the first half of 2013. But when it comes to the theatrical release, I honestly don't have a clue yet. Right, okay. Well, uh... Stay posted and thank you so much for your time, guys. Rock on. Thank you.